Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to Ask a Member, the program of the Adrian Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm Ann Hughes, Chamber President, and it's my pleasure today to welcome Regina Funkhauser, who's the Executive Director of the Nonprofit Network. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, what is the Nonprofit Network? The Nonprofit Network is a nonprofit organization, and we serve nonprofit organizations and consultants. Uh, helping to improve the governance of nonprofit organizations. So we provide professional development and workshops and ways to strengthen how nonprofits work so that they're more effective and efficient. Right. And we here at the chamber have had uh, made use of your services and have yeah. knowledge of that firsthand. We yes. Had a, uh, uh, a board retreat of any of our uh, viewers uh, watching this and if you have a board that you're governed by and you really want to ramp up their uh, their commitment and their their ability to govern effectively. Uh, your Board 101 and the piece that you did where you surveyed our board members before that program, uh, we've had a new board since then and they were good to start with. Now they're, uh, <laughs> They're excellent. Well, it truly go, uh, and your uh, your testimony proves that so many people know that they that 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 they want to be on a board, that they want to be in service, but they don't know how. They don't know the mechanics. They don't know what about what they're doing might not be as effective or efficient as they want it want to be. They. They, there are, I, I know that when I say this, the meeting after meeting after meeting that, it, that runs over, yet nothing's done, nothing's accomplished, and everyone starts feeling frustrated. We help with that. We make uh, those boards understand how what they do and how they do impact the efficiency and effectiveness of their organization. They are tied together closely, and that is a recognition um, on the board aspect of how a chair uh, can impact the effectiveness of an organization, how a board impacts the effectiveness of, a, of the organization, how a leader can improve how an organization functions. So that's what we do. So what's the most important thing that a board does for a nonprofit? The most important thing that a board does would be to um, set direction and uh, ensure that policies and procedures are in place that make sense to the organization. So they are a group of expert advisors uh, that help an organization think clearly about its direction and the way and and how they use resources. And in the nonprofit world and small small business world, resources is not just money. Resources is staff and wisdom and ability and skill sets and how you use all that for the betterment of the organization. Okay. So what did, uh, how many organizations do you work with? Are you a membership organization? We are a membership organization and currently we have over 200 members, but we do not have geographic boundaries. Okay, that so. was going to be my next question. <laughs> So we're, we're, our home is actually in Jackson, but we spend a lot of time here in Adrian serving m many of the nonprofit organizations and hope to serve more of the nonprofit organizations here in Lenaway and Adrian to help them become more efficient, to help them do more with less. Everyone, every nonprofit organization, every business is asking that question of, we have increased need, but we have decreased Resources. resources to serve that need. How do we work quicker, faster, better, serving with more impact this increased need that we have? So how do we do that? Well, we recognize that the board is one of the first places we have to start with. An inefficient board is going to be an inefficient organization. There are study after study, and I know that you may find this fascinating, I do, I find board governance research <laughs> fascinating, but there's studies that prove that an efficient and effective board leads to an effect, effect, efficient and effective organization. So we have to look at the structure of the board and, and figure out how they're making decisions, whether or not they have the right people and the right mix at the table to help guide and lead that organization. So uh, choosing the right chair. I have had more than one, and I, I won't say names because I know they're at this point, after spending some time with me, they're now embarrassed that they've said yes. 
but I've had uh, people come to me and sit in my office and say, I got voted in as chair last night. And I say, of my nonprofit board, and I said, did you know before last night you were going to be chair? Nope. <laughs> I was the only one willing. So the succession planning, the, that have we chosen the right leader? Have we prepared that leader to be our leader? Have we chosen our leader to lead that is a uh, moderator and a mediator, not based on the fact that the chair talks the most at the meetings. Therefore, the chair is now eligible and skilled to be the chair because he's the most verbose. It's actually the complete opposite. Is Do you have a chair that's listening and directing and orchestrating a solid conversation? It's a completely different way of looking at leadership around your board table. Well, I can remember a couple years ago when you came and did Board 101 with, with our board, and you just happened to mention as you were talking that the the vice chair or the incoming chair was also the head of the governance committee, you know, and Jim Cunnington's face kind of fell, <laughs> um, but he took it on and yes. did a wonderful job. Uh, but you also related what happened in another chamber that when you mentioned that, that person who would have filled that role got up and left. <laughs> Um, you know, part of it is the board really needs to be educated as to what their role is what their and, role, what, and what their right, jobs are. Right. And what's daily operation, which is not the board role. Daily operation should be focused on staff. And what is a governance role and an oversight role. And, and, and as I think you and I talked about in our, and your board talked about, who does that board work for? Because so many boards have the interpretation that they work at the service of the executive director. Mm -hmm. And and in reality, that board works in service to the community and to taxpayers. And so they're they're governing for what's best for the community. Right. And that whole uh, uh, shift in in thought process about where they pledge their allegiance is critical to a truly well governed board. Fascinating, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really is. I can it's talk good. about this for days. <laughs> <laughs> well, we probably don't have days, but um, you, do, you do some other things too. Um, I, I know you help kind of uh, broker may, not, may or may not be the right word when companies in the area have excess uh, office office furnishings, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been the the, yes. uh, the recipient of that from uh, one of the colleges in Jackson. Um, but you also do things for the executive directors. Yep. I mean, there's granted there's a lot of nonprofits, but there aren't there aren't so many that there's a lot of executive directors. You know, there aren't a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of support or people who know what you're you're going through running a nonprofit. Right. So what do you do for those folks? So we so one we provide one on one counseling. Any executive director that can pick me up uh, pick the phone up and give me a call and say this is what happened at my board last night. Tell me what I do now. Um, and just have that dialogue of being able to, what's the proper procedure, what do we do? But we also have networking events on a monthly basis. Here in Adrian, it's the second Monday, or second Tuesday of the month, uh, and we collect and have an opportunity for executive directors to talk about employee management, to talk about board governance, to talk about time management, to talk about fundraising, to talk about asset management, um, an asset in terms of staffing and how can I generate more revenue with the assets that I have. So we have some really cool conversations around those tables and make connections and that, that executive directors may not have access to. They have, they, 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 as we all do, we tend to um, congregate with people that do like work, mm -hmm. but when you have the symphony executive director with the Humane Society executive director and they find commonality and find resources to share uh, and experiences to share that enrich both of them, it's a truly dynamic conversation. So where do Regina, the executive director, lunch, and where does that take place? That takes place at the Human Services Building in the uh, kitchen area on the main floor, right outside of the MSU extension. Okay. And if someone wants, somebody is watching this and they want to find out how they can participate, what do they do? I would suggest you go to our website, which is www.nonprofnetwork.org. Nonprof, 
network.org, no IT and nonprofit. Okay. Um, and there's a trainings tab, and the trainings has our entire calendar on it, and you can sign up for uh, um, the executive director lunch and learn. You can also sign up to get our emails that tell you about all of our other professional development opportunities. Okay, and if someone wants to find out about membership in the nonprofit network, call you. Call me, 796 four seven five zero five one seven seven nine six four seven five zero I would love to talk to you okay very good thank, thank you very you. much for being here thank today. you so much for the thanks. opportunity